let me first of all say that uh, I'm not here to flatter him. Anything I say here is the way it actually is. And that's the way I feel about him. Uh, I worked with Jide Sonwolu for roughly four years in the banking industry. I, he was a treasurer at a point, and then later on, he became the general manager for investment banking. Uh, in all these years, he was assigned very sensitive responsibilities and in very sensitive positions. Positions that could only be held by someone that you trust, someone that has character and integrity. He was in treasury department the life wire of any bank. You could not just pick anybody from the street. You have to put somebody you trust, somebody who's reliable and who has competence. And Jide was a thoroughbred professional. I was quite impressed with him because of the way he took his job. He took his job seriously. We, in the course of the years, we worked together as treasury. And if you speak to any bank, MD, he will tell you that the closest relationship he has with any of his staff will be first his treasury manager and second his foreign exchange manager. Gide and I had close relationship. We worked together as a team. I respect his level of judgment, his decision-making capability and his competence level. And that's why I didn't hesitate when I was appointed deputy governor to request him to come along with me because I needed somebody at that level who I could trust to work with me going into a new job. So in the public sector, um, he, he creditably delivered himself. I didn't have any problem with him whatsoever. In the, I mean the private sector. In the public sector, we just practically continued where we left. Uh, he was at first my advisor, and he advised very well. We worked together in several assignments given to us by the governor. And I didn't have any reason to complain about him at all. At a point in time, I felt that he needed higher responsibility. So I personally approached the governor to humbly and kindly elevate him to the level of a cabinet rank special advisor and the governor obliged. And from then onward, he worked directly with the governor. And, but throughout our tenure, he was um, a very, very good public officer. And I really didn't have any reason to complain about his performance. So I, I believe that he discharged himself creditably well. Well, um, 20 years of Lagos State has been years of progress and tremendous development. There is no doubt about it. If you grow up in Lagos or you are born in Lagos, you will see the marked difference between then and now. There has been giant strides. Uh, this has happened basically because there has been continuity in governance. The foundation was laid properly by Ashiwa Jibola Ametinubu. We actually had a blueprint for development of Lagos, uh, which was the Aingbeti uh, program that was held every year between 1999 and I think about 2009 or 2010 before it was stopped. So this really formed the bedrock of developmental efforts by Lagos State. What has changed between then and now? is a tremendous influx of people into Lagos. The multitude, the population has grown tremendously, in fact, geometrically beyond anybody's imagination. So the state has been so burdensome under a weight of demands by its populace that it could not meet. Revenue growth has not been able to match up with developmental needs of the state. So this has created a lot of problems. The second issue is the leapfrogging technology. The state has not been able to keep up 
with the technology advancement of the rest of the world. Um, and one of the reasons behind this is also because of a large influx of people that's coming to Lagos. It's extremely very difficult to cope with the challenges of environment, housing, transportation, congestion, um, education and healthcare, providing education and healthcare for the populace. These are the challenges that uh, incoming governor Rajide Sanwulu will meet. However, if you follow his campaign very well, he has the campaign slogan called theme, which spelled out many of these areas that I've mentioned. And because he's very, very well prepared to meet these challenges, because he has walked through the system, he knows that every year, if we don't leapfrog, these problems will catch us, will catch up with us, and it will be more difficult to overcome. So I think I is very much ready. I've had several discussions with him. I've listened to him when he was campaigning. I've had him on TV and radio. And I know that he's ready to face these issues frontally, particularly the issue of transportation, the great luck Lagosians face every year, every day, the environmental challenges that Lagos face, the problem of education, the large influx, and the young population, particularly youth employment, and creating job opportunities for them. I'm sure he's very much aware of all this and is ready, very much ready to cope. So I think that um, 20 years to date, a lot has changed. Uh, developmentally, Lagos has grown. Uh, challenges have also multiplied. And uh, the technology advancement the world has experienced uh, is very much around in Lagos. But the state has not really caught up with that advancement. And Babajide Sonwulu, who is a child of technology, he grew up in the midst of technology, his entire career has been along that line. I'm sure he's ready to take up the mantle of leadership and do things that will make Lagos be at par with the rest of the world. Well, my advice is very simple. He should remain true to himself. Don't allow the office to change him. He should stay focused and he should stay in the place of prayers at all times. <laughs>